On today's show, the Capitals picked up a huge win over the Red Wings, but they have a tough schedule ahead, so there's no time for complacency. And Tom Wilson is named one of the players that other NHL players hate playing against. Let's talk about that next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and a welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows. When you're growing your business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about how the Capitals picked up a huge win over the Red Wings, uh, this was a game that the Red Wings outshot the Capitals, but somehow, some way, they found a way to win the game. Uh, hint, hint, it had a lot to do with Charlie Lindgren, so they cannot be complacent. They need to keep their foot squarely on the gas pedal. We'll talk about that. A little bit later, we will talk about how Tom Wilson was named one of the players yet again that a lot of other NHL players hate playing against, but they would love to have him as a teammate. We'll talk about that. And then a little bit later, we will talk about how the Hershey Bears signed some Caps prospects to amateur tryout agreements. But just to get it going here, that's what I'm talking about, is keeping your foot on the gas, keeping focused. Uh, it has been a roller coaster ride for the Capitals this season, to be sure. Uh, there were times that they were in the playoffs. They were out of it. They were in it. And it's easy to ride the high coming off a big win against a team like the Red Wings. Um, and it was a game that if it wasn't for Charlie Lindgren, let's just be honest here, Capitals fans, that the Capitals most likely would not have won. So with that in mind, they need to keep everything that they learned in the game against the Red Wings when they were blocking shots, uh, when they were doing what it took to win the game and, and have that going forward. As we know that there's games coming up here against the Sabres and the Lightning if they want to be uh, in the winning business. And I think that ultimately, if you are an NHL team, you want to be in the winning business. And let's not forget that the Capitals just came off a six-game losing streak. Uh, so to not underestimate your opponent, I know the Capitals struggled and lost to the Sabres the last time they played, and that's a kind of you know exemplifying what I'm talking about, you know, not uh, undervaluing your, your opponent and just keeping your foot squarely on the gas. This is crunch time, and the Capitals must make hay while the sun shines. The Capitals did the improbable by taking down the Red Wings Tuesday night. And let's be honest, if it wasn't for Lindgren, the Caps would not have won like I spoke of. Lindgren is up to the task as he did his best Superman impersonation in net, making some saves on high danger chances that, let's be honest, Darcy Kemper frankly would not have saved. He saved 42 on the night and nearly got the shutout. If it wasn't for Patrick uh, Kane's late goal in the tail end of the game, Charlie Lindgren would have pitched a shutout. Uh, and uh, like I talked about yesterday, it was pretty much the entire Capitals team in the crease that it was difficult. But, you know, Patrick Kane snuck around the back of the net and just knocked it in there, uh, sullying uh, Charlie Lindgren's bid for a shutout. But they got a big win. They got a big two points. They leapfrogged the Detroit Red Wings 
all is good in Capitals land, at, le at least for now it is anyway. We knew how important this game was, Lindgren said. Obviously, we're coming off a few games in a row where we were on the wrong side of playing against a team in the standings. I felt like it was a must-win situation. And I think that if it's possible, I think the Capitals should treat every game for the remainder of the regular season as a must-win game. Uh, the Metro division is stacked pretty tight, and there's teams that if you fall off, if you lose a game, and another team up playing in the Metro starts playing well, it could be curtains for your team. That's what I'm talking about. The Capitals cannot get complacent uh, with their play. The Capitals must not be complacent. The Caps are 37, 30, and 11 with 85 points and holds the second wild card into the Stanley Cup playoffs from the Eastern Conference. And then you look at the Detroit Red Wings and Pittsburgh Penguins each have 84 points. All three of those teams have four games remaining and Detroit plays Pittsburgh on Thursday, guaranteeing one of them two points. So it's going to be tight. And, you know, the Sabres, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to tell it by looking at the standings, but are a pretty good team. It's a young team with a lot of talent that I think will be one of the better teams in the NHL in years to come. Uh, and why is that? Because they have been horrible for so long that they've stockpiled draft picks uh, and they've traded away some pieces and added some pieces that they will be in a good position going forward. The cap schedule for the rest of the season includes Buffalo, Tampa Bay, Boston, and Philadelphia. Uh, if one of those teams, I would say, is out of it, or two of them, rather, it would be Buffalo and Philadelphia, as Philadelphia came on strong and far surpassed anyone's thoughts of how good they were going to play with John Tortorella, a bit of a polarizing guy that uh, he will alienate himself from the locker room, calling people out, uh, benching different players that probably shouldn't be benched, but he gets results. And ultimately that is why they're happy with him. And uh, there was some talk about if he'll be replaced at the end of the season. And the flyer said, no, they like the intensity that he brings. So that is what we can expect going uh, for the rest of this season and going into next season, that it is going to be tough. And uh, just for the Capitals to be in the position that they're in right now, that they are potentially going to make it into the playoffs. Uh, not winning handily, uh, but they are finding a way to get it done and answering the bell uh, when they need to. And uh, there's a lot of people that have negative thoughts. They'll say, Dan, you said good things about the Capitals yesterday. Did you forget that they lost six in a row? No, no, I didn't. But if you are an everyday of the show, you know I talk about that. You, if you cannot wallow in misery all the time and not accept uh, when they play well. Otherwise, what kind of crazy fan are you at the end of the day? Uh, I want to be a person that's willing to assess when they're not playing well and also call them out when they are playing well. Uh, I think that's only fair. Uh, so the Capitals to be in the position that they're in right now to even be in the hunt uh, is something that I don't think a lot of Capitals fans thought uh, just a couple of months ago, but they're getting it done but the schedule will not be easy. Keep your foot on the gas and good things will follow. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about how Tom Wilson was named as a player least liked playing against. What is it about Tom Wilson anyway? I don't get it, or maybe I do. Let's discuss next. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian improved and ready-to-eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular op options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up on your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors Ready to Eat Meals so you can get back to doing what you love doing this spring. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, uh, broccoli, and asparagus. Asparagus, no fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. Tailored to your schedule, customize your weekly meals with flexibility to get you as much as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL and
and use code locked on NHL to get up to 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Tom Wilson is a bit of a polarizing player. We know that uh, if you are a fan of the team and you live in D.C., you love what Tom Wilson means to this team. He's a physical presence. He's a goal scorer. Many people think the future captain of this team but if you live outside of the D.C. market and say you're not a Capitals fan, it's easy not to like him. I've heard that from fan bases, uh, but I've also heard in a recent poll here that other players don't like playing against him, but they would love to have him as a teammate. Hmm, interesting how that is, uh, that if perhaps uh, Tom Wilson switched his jersey to another team's jersey, then that fan base would love him as well. Maybe the you know the perception shouldn't be that he's so bad. He's just a physical guy that plays with an edge that can score goals and won't take any BS from anyone out there. That is what we love about number forty three on this team. Uh, but it is a unique honor for Tom Wilson, and he is not the only one on the list, of course. Uh, but and just talking about you know some people compare him to a Reeves or a Maroon. Uh, which in my assessment are just junkyard dogs, uh, just all intimidation and no real skill set uh, beyond fighting. Uh, they don't possess any goal scoring touch. So let's take a look at Tom Wilson and differentiate between the two. Wilson has scored 17 goals and 15 assists for 32 points in 70 games this season, along with 214 hits second most on the team and 124 penalty minutes. He recently finished serving a six game suspension for high sticking Maple Leafs forward, Noah Gregor. Um, that's one of the ones that I don't totally fault him on. I, again, I understand that the stick was up high, but Noah Gregor himself said that he didn't think it was intentional. It was just one of those heat of the moment things. Uh, and that's ultimately what happened. What happened with Tom Wilson? Well, he got suspended for six games, not on that, instance alone, but based on his reputation and his history. It's kind of an interesting thing. He also has the honor of being named for the fourth straight season as NHL Players Association Players Poll question, which player do you least enjoy playing against but would like to have as a teammate? Again, it's interesting, you know, and we take a look at Last summer when he signed his new deal, there was a lot of Capitals fans up in arms, myself included, about is he going to hit the market? Is he going to be out of here? Uh, despite the fact that uh, Brian McClellan seemed pretty confident, Tom Wilson said that he was going to come back, but also said some cryptic things like, you know, crazier things have happened. It led a lot of people to go down conspiratorial rabbit holes. Stephen Wino, for example, as well. Uh, but he is. He's he's going to be the captain after Alex Ovechkin hangs up the skates. He signed a big contract. We love him in D.C., uh, but it is interesting. So let's take a look at it. The results are from a poll of 639 NHL players. Wilson ranked fourth on the list, so he was at number one. Brad Marchand won number one for the fourth straight year. I can see that, you know, and I'm not a big fan of Brad Marchand, but is that a, an interesting situation where if Brad Marchand put on a Capitals jersey. We'd probably love him on this team. Probably. Uh, but uh, for the same reason, I think that a lot of other players and fans don't like Tom Wilson is the same reason why I'm not a huge Brad Marchand fan. Connor McDavid and Matthew Kachuk were rated ahead of Wilson. Nathan McKinnon was also on the list. Wilson was in the top three for the last three years. This year saw him drop to fourth. Uh, so he's mellowing with age a little bit. He's not quite... 
uh, the guy that he once was that will drop the gloves at a moment's notice. He's maturing. I talked about that uh, in an interview with Mike Vogel on his podcast, talking about that he doesn't feel like he needs to play that style of hockey all the time, that I don't need to drop the gloves against a fourth line AHL call-up that's trying to make a name for himself. That's time that I'm not going to be on the ice contributing, helping my team win games. That's maturity. That's a Tom Wilson that's an older, more mature player than he was some years ago. So uh, in any event, I think that because he is not as active, he's not um, as much of a fighter that um, maybe perhaps, you know, people's opinions, uh, other players' opinions on him are mellowing a little bit. Uh, Tom Wilson was the only Capitals player to be listed on that particular list, which comes as no surprise. An interesting thing, though, if we want to take a look at physicality on the Capitals, is, you know, uh, for the longest time in his younger day, Alex Ovechkin was quite a physical player. And then Tom Wilson entered the picture, and I think that he felt like, I don't need to play that game anymore. I don't need to be the guy that drops the gloves like I did when I was a younger man. I got a younger, stronger guy over there, you know, stronger, relatively speaking, uh, that can fight for me. But what happened when Tom Wilson uh, was on that six-game suspension, all of a sudden you saw Alex Ovechkin ratchet up his physical game. So he is a guy that casts a wide shadow, Tom Wilson that is, and he is the leader of the physicality. If you've got a problem with someone out on, out on the ice, you're going to have to answer to this guy, and you're not going to take advantage of our young players that are playing out there. What's not to like about a guy like Tom Wilson on the team? A multidimensional, scores goals, sticks up for his teammates, uh, that is ultimately why I think that if you take a look at that poll, they don't like playing against him because what he brings, but they would like to have him as a teammate. That is an interesting thing. All right. So coming up here after br the break here, we will talk about how the Hershey bears sign some capitals prospects to amateur tryout agreements. Who are those players and where do they fit into the Hershey bears master plans? I'll discuss coming up. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast. Indeed suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. So if you are someone that is involved in hiring and HR, you know, take the frustration out of your life and look into Indeed. They make your life that much easier. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must have job requirements. Visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on. That's indeed dot com slash locked on terms and conditions apply cost per application pricing not available for everyone you need to hire you need indeed All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Hershey Bears are killing it, uh, as it should come as no surprise, as they won the Calder Cup just last season. They're playing very well this year, but they have to have their eyes on the future. And the fact that the Capitals called up quite a few uh, Hershey Bears players put them in a unique position, uh, and that is subsequently why they signed uh, two uh, players to amateur tryout agreements. Uh, just taking a look at what players the Hershey Bears signed to Capitals prospects. The Hershey Bears signed Capitals prospect, prospect Brett Highland and Cam Allen to an amateur tryout agreement on Wednesday. Highland was selected in 2023 NHL's draft seventh round. Pick Highland wrapped up his season with the Brandon Wheat Kings. He's a winger that led the Wheat Kings with 32 goals, 27 assists in 66 games. 
Uh, so quite the dynamic player, something that I think uh, that the Capitals will be looking for. Uh, Allen was also selected by the Caps in 2023. Allen was the Caps' fifth round selection in the 2023 NHL draft. Allen joins the Bears after wrapping up his season with the OHL's Storm team. Allen's season was delayed after a shoulder surgery in August. He's a blue liner with a good upside. Uh, so good that they're making good on that. And ultimately, they will just be considered as one or two, in this case, black aces for depth on this team. Uh, both players will join the, the Bears as black aces. At the end of the day, this is a much needed depth move for the Bears team that has seen much of their talent get promoted to the big team. And ultimately, that is what the Hershey Bears job is to, is to serve the Capitals. Uh, let's not confuse that. Even if the AHL Hershey Bears are playing better than the Capitals, their job is to help facilitate and staff the Capitals when needed. Uh, I think that uh, sometimes people get that messed up and people are like, well, what are you doing? You're going to you're going to mess up the Hershey Bears team. They're making a push for the Calder Cup. That's fine. But that, you know, uh, th this isn't their first rodeo. They've planned for this. And in this case, uh, that is why they signed two players to amateur tryout agreements. Uh, but let's take a look at the players that did, in fact, get called up. Uh, Hendrix Lop here, Ivan Mirshnashenko, Vincent Iorio, and Lucas Johansson. Um, and then if you want to take a look at last year, difference as well is that Beck Malenstein has also been called up as well. Uh, Scarbosa is in the mix. So there's been a lot of players down in Hershey uh, that have got called up. Some have been reassigned, but in any event, uh, they need depth on that team as they are making their push uh, in the Calder Cup playoffs. They are bound. I think they can do it ultimately at the end of the day. Uh, there is nothing that leads me to believe that they're going to get stopped at any point. The Hershey Bears are another really great team this year. So this will uh, you know, be a good opportunity for the Capitals, the Hershey Bears in this example, to get a good look at Brett Highland and Cam Allen two young players in the Capitals organization that, uh, you know, could potentially be the face of this team in years to come. Uh, again, when you get into young talent, sometimes it works out. Sometimes that talent get, is seen as an asset and gets traded out of town. But in any event, it is a good opportunity to get a look at two young Capitals prospects and see where they fit into the Capitals master plans. Uh, because despite, you know, what the Capitals do here towards the end of the season, uh, if they do make it to the playoffs, that's great. But say they, they don't make it, uh, that uh, it would be nice to have a team within the Capitals organization that uh, is making progress. And I do think, I know as a matter of fact, that the Hershey Bears are a, a, another quality team year after year after year. So a good thing. And, you know, just for that matter, if, if you are uh, someone that lives in D.C. or in the DMV area and you have not made your way out to watch a Hershey Bears game, do it. I did it. I went out there. Top-notch facility kind of reminds me of an NHL arena, to be honest with you, because I saw the Hershey Bears play up in New York as well in a facility that was not nearly as nice. Uh, so do yourself a favor. Make the somewhat short drive from the D.C. area uh, out to Hershey and watch a game. Uh, and, and watch some young up-and-coming stars within the Capitals organization. I did it. I loved it. Um, it was a great time. There's not a bad seat in the house. And help root on uh, this Hershey Bears team that seems to be going uh, in the right direction and making inroads to winning another Calder Cup. I'm not getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I think they have a really good chance of winning another Calder Cup this season. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And let me uh, let me emphasize that a little bit. I've already heard about some Capitals podcasts pulling up their, their stakes and taking their tent out of town that as soon as the season wraps up here, it's going to be crickets. You're not going to hear anything from them, most likely until the fall. Not the case with Locked On Capitals. We are your go-to Capitals podcast year-round, uh, five days a week for the most part. There are a couple weeks in, in the middle of the dog days of summer where we're three days a week, but by and large, we are your go-to Capitals podcast, five days a week, available on YouTube, available wherever you get your podcasts. And I want to thank all of you that have joined and started listening to this podcast this season. And I look forward to seeing and hearing from many of you 
this summer as well. All right, when you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.